Now it's the winners in the public sector category. Tournons-nous maintenant aux lauréats du secteur public. L'Alliance canadienne pour la maladie mentale et la santé mentale souligne cette année les efforts du département de la défense nationale en ce qui a trait la promotion de la santé mentale au sein des forces canadiennes. CAMI would like to recognize the efforts made by the Department of National Defense in promoting mental health within the Canadian forces. According to a recent study, the rate of mental health issues among Canada's armed forces is not surprisingly significantly higher than for the general population, and many veterans and Canadian forces members reported that they did not seek help for their mental health issues. The Department of National Defense has committed to educate Canadian Forces members and their families, veterans, on mental health issues to create a culture of acceptance and encourage people to seek help. Today, CAMI is recognizing this commitment by awarding three key members of the department a Champions of Mental Health Award. Their collective efforts have increased awareness of mental health issues among the forces and have helped encourage veterans and soldiers to seek help. La CMMSM reconnaît ce soir les engagements de trois individus distingués au sein du département de la Défense nationale. On les nomme tous les, tous les champions de santé mentale l'Alliance désire accentuer que c'est grâce à leur contribution. Um, the first award recipient joined the military in 1983. He has served in several missions abroad, including Rwanda in 1994-95 and in Afghanistan in 2007. Faced with his own undiagnosed post-traumatic stress disorder upon return from Rwanda, he took a personal interest in the way that the Canadian Forces was dealing with mental health issues at the time. In 2001, he coined the term operational stress injury and founded the Operational Stress Injury Social Support Program, a program designed to reduce pervasive stigma and improve social support to military members, veterans, and their families. And he was awarded a Meritorious Service Cross for his efforts in this area in October 2007. He was named the Operational Stress Injury Special Advisor by the Chief of Military Personnel and has since launched a Canadian Forces wide workplace, a Canadian Forces wide workplace education program to raise awareness of mental health. In addition, he serves as a member of the Workforce Committee of the Mental Health Commission of Canada, and his commitment to these programs has helped increase awareness of mental health services available to our soldiers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I call to the stage Lieutenant Colonel Stéphane Grenier, champion of mental health in the public sector. Is Phil in the room? Where's Phil? Am I okay? Are we good? Okay. All right. All right. I thought I'd lighten up the mood a bit there, Phil. I'll have to apologize before I start speaking because uh, for those of you who have um, issues, uh, you know that sometimes that psycholog psychological prosthesis doesn't fit too well, right? I've, uh, and so this week my psychological prosthesis isn't, isn't doing too well, but that's okay. It'll fit better next week. It's probably the humidity. Um, I'd like to start by, by saying that, um, and I'll do the reverse than, than, than what Phil did. I'll start with the family. 
because, uh, and I could feel, I could feel that Phil was, <laughs> had to go, but I'm going to do the reverse here, Phil. I want to start by acknowledging the families. They're the ones <clears throat> who stitches us back when we come undone. Unbeknownst to the workplace, unbeknownst to our leaders and our bosses, our families stitch us back together when we come undone. And I'm very grateful for that. <clears throat> Thank you, Judy. Thank you. I'd like to also apologize to all my staff who have to endure me <laughs> on my good days and bad days, and there's a few in the back there. I, w I always tell my wife, I don't know how these people put up with me. I would not want to work for me. And so I apologize, Marianne, Trish, and the others. Uh, in 2001, when I started this uh, journey, I had somewhat recovered. Uh, and you can see I haven't fully recovered yet, but I'm, I'm working on it. But my goal was to give a voice to veterans, a voice to soldiers, and I wanted to give them a niche inside the solution of helping those who are suffering. And I, I need to acknowledge that, you know, a great idea is a great idea. But a person by the name of General Christian Couture, who had to me the mojo, he was very human. I think General Natinchuk is a very human person. General Simeonov in the back. He's always in the back. He never wants to be pointed out, but I'm going against orders, sir. I'm pointing you out. <laughs> These are the types of people who have the mojo. They understand the humanity of being a soldier. And without the soil that you're provided, you can sow all the seeds you want. It's not going to grow. And Général Couture has passed away a year in his retirement. And uh, I just want to acknowledge that. And so I wanted veterans to be part of the solution. And I remember recruiting my first peer support coordinator in the hospital. And that wasn't such a great idea, wasn't it, Surgeon General and the other psychiatrists <laughs> in the back? But you know, it worked for a while. and. Um, We've come a long way. And every time I speak to a soldier, and I was on the phone this week with a corporal from 2PPCLI in Shiloh, and he was saying, you know, thanks a lot, sir. You really made a difference. And his sar company sergeant major was telling me, thanks a lot, sir. You know, you, you helped us out here. And I told the young corporal, I said, and a bit like you, a bit like what you said, Lori. He says, what can I do for you, Colonel? What can I do to help, help, the, help this whole issue? I said, prove them wrong. Prove them wrong. Go to the unit. Put your uniform on, go to work, work at therapy, be treatment compliant, listen to the doctor, don't flush your pills down the toilet, prove them wrong. And that, Lori, I echo your comments, it's the best anti-stigma campaign you can ever have. Because now we have a commanding officer who sees a corporal wearing his uniform, going to work, and that's working. Thanks, Lori, for that, that's great. God forbid another coffin gets on a Hercules aircraft coming home to Canada. God forbid that should happen again, but you will know that there's a peer support program alive and well for the bereaved families, for the widows, for the families. And I have to say that all volunteer-based, all managed by Major LeBeau in the back, and I gotta say, these people are so uplifting. I know Minister McKay, CDS, you've met a lot of bereaved families. It all happens to such great people and families, and those are the very families that Major LeBeau empowers today to go help the next family. So all of you in this room will know that if ever it happens again, within 24 to 48 hours, that family's getting a phone call from somebody who's been down that road. And we've heard that it makes a huge difference to them. So. All of this said, this is my non-clinical world. I don't live in books and academia and science and research, but I know that consumers, patients, people who have been through the system are part of the solution now. And it doesn't take away from all the great clinical work, but my goal is to make that bridge, create that bridge and work together. And so I'm very grateful to accept this, not for me, I'm the glue stick. But for all these people who tonight are trying to get some rest for tomorrow, I have a lot of frontline workers, and Marianne, you know about those better than most, and it's for them that I have been told by all my people, just go and accept this. And it's for them who do the real work, because I'm just a glue stick. Thank you very much.